hello there this is a fairly special video because it's a compilation of parts 1 to 10 of the worldwide metal detecting find series in that series I asked people who had YouTube channels to send me a short video of something they'd found either with a metal detector or just when they've been out detecting and this was the result there's dozens and dozens of people who took the time just to make a short video and send it in and there were some great finds in every episode of the find series now I'm not gonna sit here and read from a big long list of all the people who made this thing possible but in every clip there's a little caption comes up with their channel name and also in this video description I'm gonna have all of their channels listed with a link to their channels now whether you're just starting to techno or whether you've been doing it for years there's gonna be something in this video that will be of interest to you and I've also thrown a few tips in and bits of stupidness as well throughout the video so please enjoy it I would ask that you check out at least some of the channels of the people who've contributed if you've got time check them all out they're all great guys they've all taken their own personal time to send something to me for your benefit so if you could check their channels out that would be marvelous so without further ado on with the show I'm after brooches, buttons, buckles, war relics, musket balls, cannon balls, knives, spindle whirls, coins, rings, gold nuggets, statues, dog tags, medallions, medals, spears, arrowheads, tokens, all sorts of military stuff, tweezers, thimbles, fried shrimp, grilled shrimp, boiled shrimp, Religious stuff, keys, locks. Hi, Keithy Six here of Metal Detecting in Alaska. I'm in Fairbanks, Alaska, and uh, my November find was a small pendant that has 30 small Alaskan gold nuggets in it. Found it with a Fisher Gold bug about 8 inches down in a playground. Here's a better picture. Hey everybody, it's uh, Paul, Octurian Mega Donkey. Uh, this is my entry for the Worldwide Metal Detecting Finds video set up by Pond Guru. Thanks very much, mate. Uh, this is an Edward II um, silver hammered coin. My very, very first one. It's taken me 11 months to get just one. Um, it's in really nice condition. I'm really, really happy about it. So uh, if you haven't had one of these, just keep hunting and they'll turn up. I uh, found it with the Xterra 705. Um, give a reasonably bouncy signal and it was only about three inches down. Okay, I hope you enjoy that. Catch you later, guys. Oh, they know, they know a good machine when they smell it. Hi, everybody. My name is Lee. My YouTube channel is eTracking Ohio. This is my Ohio Volunteer Militia Buckle from the U.S. Civil War. It was found in a cow pasture approximately two inches deep using the Mine Lab E-Track and two-tone ferrous with the 11 inch double D coil. Has a little plow damage but would be considered the find of a lifetime. Alright, back off boys. Get out of here. Back off my E-Track. Hello everyone. My name is Zach. Cook and well Zach and my channel name is Zach Cook. If you want to know what to go on and have a look, it's spelled Z A C K and Cook. And this is my find of the month, so quite happy for this. December I found this this stubble field. Mm 
Danny is still a hummy. Right. And that's my find. Happy hunting everyone. Wish you luck. Hello, my name's Ian. Uh, my YouTube name is Ashanaya. Uh, my find of the month is a brass barrel tap. Uh, it's incomplete, it doesn't have the actual tap on it at the top. It's about four inches long. Uh, you can see where they would hit the end of the, the barrel tap into the barrel itself and it would come out of this little spout here. Uh, found this in November, nice little artifact. Probably dates between the 18th and 19th century. Uh, it was found at the time with the Garrett Ace 250 uh, with a DD coil on it, double depth coil, and it was found about four inches down on stubble. So that's my find of the month. Hope you enjoy it, and we'll see you next month. Cheers. Well, this is a World War II pen light, 1930s to 1940s. Um, I found this one pro probably about three or four months ago in the year of um, 2012. It's one of my all-time favourite finds. It was probably found at about 10 inches down using a mine lab Xera 7. I five and my name is John Twenty Four Gold One. This is a Queen Anne Love Token sixpence from seventeen o eight. You can see it's actually been bent into an S shape. There's the bust there. It's in reasonable condition for the year given that it's over 300 years old. And this was found on ploughed land. It was very deep, it was about 10 inches. Found that with the E-Track. Back in the day, instead of actually telling a young lady that the guy was interested in her, they would take something of value, generally a piece of silver, bend it like this and give it to her at a social event. That would say, I'm interested in you. I'd like to take this a bit further. Obviously, if she wasn't interested, she would just pocket it and walk away. But if she was interested, then that would spark up the conversation. G'day guys, Spanners here. I'm from Melbourne, Australia, and my YouTube channel is SpannersMD, and my show is called Uncharted Coins and Relics. I have a, um, a relic here that I found a few days ago that I found with the E-Track, and um, it was approximately four to five inches deep. And basically, it's a medallion that was issued to the delegates uh, for the opening of the first federal parliament of Australia on um, the 9th of May 1901. It was actually minted by Stokes and Sons, and it features a, um, a portrait uh, bust of Queen Victoria and Edward on the obverse, and Duke and Duchess of Cornwall of York on the reverse. Um, uh, awesome find, probably the best relic to date that I have. Um, so I hope you guys enjoy it, and we'll see you soon. Hi, my name is John. My YouTube name is Old Gold 1100, and this is my find, which is a key, and from the information that I've gathered, that it is a medieval key. It was found about seven inch down on stubble with a golden mask three plus. Thanks for looking. Bye. Hey there again guys, my name's Johnny, and uh, this is one of my best finds recently. Um, it's an amazing condition, Henry VIII penny, minted in Canterbury. Uh, I found this with uh, my XP Gold Max Power, and I don't have a video of it on my channel, uh, which is Metal Detecting UK, because I didn't have my camera with me that day, annoyingly, but uh, I do have videos of me digging lots of other things up, lots of other coins up like this. And uh, this was actually about five inches down and uh, on pasture that had been ploughed about ten years ago. Hello, this is Mr. Mick 123M, and this is my find. It's a William the Fourth sixpence dating 1834. It was found in Liverpool with a Garrett 250 with a DD coil, and it was about five inches, five inches down. It's a silver sixpence. Uh, it's my very first William the Fourth, uh, and it completes a run of sixpences for me, which I'm very happy about. Check out my channel, Mr. Mick One Two Three M. Thanks for watching.
This is Coinage Britannia, um, carrying the same YouTube username. Uh, you will see my videos, Historical Hertfordshire Society. Um, but this is my find of the year, and it's a um, Henry the Fourth gold quarter noble, uh, or the old twenty pence. It's twenty-two carat gold hammered coin, um, dating from fourteen twelve to fourteen thirteen A.D. Um, it's from the light coinage, but we can tell it's Henry the Fourth from the trefoils and annulets you can see beside the shield, clear on the other side. Um, but this was found with a Garrett Ace 250 uh, with a 15 by 17 inch coil um, and around 2 inches in pasture land. Hey tubers, this is Pestleman1951 coming to you from sunny Southern California and uh, I've got a relic I'd like to show off here and this is a knife, a Native American Indian knife. It's made out of obsidian which is basically volcanic glass found in Northern California. It uh, dates back about six or seven thousand years ago and, I'm, and I suppose it could have been a lance or spearhead tip too. But uh, it's a beauty, very symmetrical, very, very, I just love this obsidian glass stuff. Boy, it's cool. Thanks. Hello, this is my entry for um, Pond Guru's Worldwide Metal Detecting Finds. Uh, this was my first silver I ever found, my first silver and silver coin. Uh, it's dated 1873. It's a Belgian 5 francs, uh, Leopold II. It weighs uh, 24.7 grams and it's 900 silver. It was lying right on the top uh, of a fresh, freshly plowed and rolled field and it gave <laughs> a really big signal. Um, it was sticking half out of the ground like this. So when I looked down, I immediately, I immediately, immediately saw this sticking out of the ground. So, and I was really happy. Thanks for watching. Any comments on Belgai eighty one? Thank you. Bye bye. Hi Ponguru. Um, seen your channel new finds of the month, and basically what you're finding of the month and what's your best found. Um, I went out yesterday, Baltic weather, up Yorkshire, um, spent a good 20 minutes, nearly an all day sesh. All I found was, I'll just show you, was a Nemo key. I mean, you can see that all right. This this key must be from late 20, God, I bet it's late 2000 and 11 at least, I mean, it's a good year find, just don't know where it unlocks. I mean, what I found it with is a really good metal detector, which is this, I think I got this when I was about 12, cost me about 20 quid. I mean, look at this, it's uh, a Pioneer 101, oh, it's got everything, this is the shiz, it's even got an armrest as you can see, so, I mean, that, that'll find me a gold bar one day. You see, but that's my find at month. Um, a Nemo key. I even think it's my mum's house that I buried in the garden. Um, but what can you say? Nemo key. Cheerio. If you're like me and you've ever wondered what went on in different fields, whether anybody camped in all that flat land there next to the river, the fields on each side of this road are very much higher than the road itself. I wonder if that means that the road is very old. Nice little village I'm coming into now, right on the hilltop. This would have made a cracking lookout back in Roman and medieval times when there were a lot of troubles with border raiders. Maybe there's something around here. Whether the footpaths we're walking on now were used by people hundreds, possibly thousands of years ago, well, the things that you find with your detector will possibly answer a few of those questions. You're going to be seeing lots of stuff found on pasture, on beaches, and also on ploughed land parks, all sorts of places, wherever people have been, they've dropped something. And whenever people have dropped something, people in the future with metal detectors will be finding it. Hello everyone, String Frenzy here. YouTube channel name is Ohio Metal Detecting. This item 
is a Boy Scout commemorative neckerchief slide from 1950. It's a Strength in the Arm of Liberty slide. Although I hunt primarily with a MineLab E-Track now, this was found with a White's DFX. Rang up in the range of a quarter or so, somewhere at around five inches. Uh, it was recovered on the east side of Ohio. The address for the channel is at the top of the screen. Hello, this is Mr. Mick, 123M, and this is my George III Sixpence. Uh, 1818 as you can see, uh, otherwise known as a bullhead sixpence, as you can see by his, his big head. It's in great condition. It was found with a Garrett 250 uh, in Kersus in Wales. It was about six inches down. Um, and it's my second one, but by far my best condition. Thanks for watching. Check out my other finds at Mr. Mick 123M. Thank you. Well, hey guys, this is um, an Australian Rising Sun hat badge. And it's from an Australian army. It's found in Queensland, Australia. Underneath is the shoulder flash that would go on the Australian army uniform. Um, I found this with a CTX 3030. And it was a probably probably at least six inches down in really sandy loamy soil. And my name is John Twenty Four Gold One. Hi, I'm Ian uh, Ash and I are on YouTube. And my find of the month this month is a silver one shilling token, circa 1811. Uh, it's by R.D. Hall from Poulton the Fylde, one of three Lancashire mints at the time. Um, quite rare. I uh, found this one on pasture about three inches down and at the time I was using the Garrett Ace 250 with the uh, double depth coil. And that's exactly how it came out of the ground. Right, hope you enjoy the find. Thanks very much for watching. Hi, my name is John. My YouTube username is oldgold1100. I'd like to show this tiny little hammer coin courtesy of Pond Guru's worldwide metal detecting videos. Thanks for looking. Hello guys, it's Paul from the United Kingdom, uh, aka Probing Po. Uh, in April 2012, I found an old purse. Uh, just turn that over there, you can tell where the coins have been. And also, on that piece there. Oops, there are the coins there. The coins age from between that one's 1916 and that one there is 1967. Found them at the side of an old path, uh, probably about 10 inches down. And at the time I was using the Fisher F4. Alright guys, bye de bye. Hi guys, Rob here from Roman Rob 97 YouTube channel. I have a, a find here today for you to look at. It's a cameo brooch which I found with the 
Garrett 80 Pro on farmland. Between 6 and 8 inches deep this one was. It's a nice little buckle, a nice little brooch rather, which uh, as you can see got a little spark in it there. When it looked at and it's uh, believed to be Victorian, you can see the pin's missing and the hole in the top they tell me was used as a pendant as well as a brooch, so you can wear it as either. Okay, thanks a lot. See you soon. Okay guys, it's CB, um, otherwise known in my videos um, for Historical Hopture Society um, and my find of the month is this beautiful Bronze Age axe head. Um, it is the flanged style um, and it dates from 1800 to 1600 BC so it's about 3,600 years old. Um, quite a stunning find, it was only 5 inches down found with the Garrett Ace 250. Um, and it's for the, for the age comparison, um, if you think about the pharaoh Tutankhamun, um, he came about 500 years after the earliest date of this. This is a miniature cannon. Now this dates from either late Georgian or early Victorian times. And this would actually be mounted on a wooden carriage with little wheels on. And I think this is an interesting find because kids would actually treat this as a toy. And they would actually fire little balls out of here exactly the same way as you would with a full-size cannon. Now this was found in the field just behind my house. It's pasture, it's never been turned over. And this was about 11 or 12 inches down. It still gave a crack and signal. But I was really surprised when I dug this up. And this was with the 18 by 15 inch coil on the Mine Lab E-Track. Bang! Hey guys, my name's Johnny. I'm 15 and from Norfolk. Uh, I used an XP Gold Max Power to get this, which is my best find of November. It's a Philip and Mary half groat, uh, and it's not in great condition because I didn't actually get out that much in November. But I've had many since, all of these in December. I have videos of me digging all these up on my channel, which is Metal Detecting UK. Hello guys and girls, Lee Citron Symes here. My YouTube channel is Chidicly. This is my entry for find of the month. This is my first ever gold find. It was found on the Chesil Beach in Dorset, which is a shingle beach. It was found using a Seascope CS990XD. This is 19 grams, 9 carat gold uh, saddle ring. And I'm off to get it valued today. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do after I've had it valued. But at the time, when I found it, I was so surprised, I nearly ate my pin pointer. Good luck, happy hunting, it's out there, go find it. Money, money, money! <laughs> <laughs> Look at it! Millions and millions and millions. Oh, somebody's been putting silver coins is, in here as well. This is the money dragon. And this tree is covered. It is covered. Okay, alright, we're ready with it. Here we go. So when you come up the falls and you hear this knock, 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 it's not a woodpeck. Look at all that money. <laughs> Look at it. I'm in a metal detecting club and I've found stuff that some of the other lads haven't found. They've found quite a lot of stuff that I haven't found. But everybody finds different stuff, and in this series of videos, you're going to see that there's loads of people sending videos of stuff that they have found that I know I'll never find. But there's also people posting videos of stuff that I've got pretty good chance of finding if I stick at it long enough. Hello, this is Belguy81 with my entry for uh, Pond Guru's Worldwide Wide Metal Detecting Finds. Um, this buckle, uh, double swan head buckle, um, I found just next to my garden. Uh, I know there were, well, English speaking uh, soldiers who camped there um, after the war. Um, well, it's a brass buckle, and as you can see, it's quite ornate. Um, I don't really know from which army this is. Uh, I think it's Canadian, maybe American. I, I am really not sure. Any comments? Bell Guy 81. Thank you.
Evening all, my name's Ian from Worksop, UK. Uh, I've only been detecting for about 11 months. Uh, my best, best find to date would be my William III shilling. Have a look, you can see. Get some light on it. And that will find on pasture. Um, on my third trip out, as you can see, it's William III shilling, 1696, no mint mark, so it's royal mint. Uh, in beautiful condition, you can see a bit better. Reverse. Absolutely perfect condition. Found with my uh, laser rapier, and uh, and that's about it. Thanks. Hello, my name is Mike. Uh, my YouTube channel is Michael Swan 66 uh, United States. And uh, this is my entry for Pond Guru's uh, Finds Competition video entry. Uh, found this 14 karat gold nugget ring. It's the first gold find of 2012. Found it in a field laying right on top of the ground using the White's XLT. And it's one of my favorite finds of the year. Hi guys, Rob here from YouTube's Roaming Rob 97 channel. What I find here for today is a uh, token or coin of Robert Rakes. He was the publicizer of the Sunday School movement back in 1780, and this coin was struck 100 years later to commemorate him. And you can see on the back there, 1880. Uh, the coin's made of pewter. Uh, I found it on farmland, six inches down, with the Garrett 80 Pro. Thank you. Hi folks, uh, Rich Biss here on YouTube. Uh, this is my find of the week. Uh, it is a 22 carat Indian gold uh, elephant good luck ring. Uh, although obviously it wasn't very lucky for them. Uh, it was found uh, three inches down uh, on pasture land using the eat track. Uh, good luck everybody and speak to you all soon. Bye bye. This here is um, a Royal Australian Air Force hat pin. It was found on an American Army base within Australia, in Queensland. Yeah, this one was pretty much on the surface. I think I dug about one or two inches, if that. And I found it with a CTX 3030 from Mine Lab. And if you'd like to check out my channel, it's John24 Gold One on YouTube. Hi, this is John from the John316 UK. Uh, this is my entry for Worldwide Detecting Finds. I found this um, around about June time in the Stubbly Field. It's a Victorian pocket watch fob. Uh, maker's Marks. It was made in Birmingham in 1876. And the Maker's Mark is William Walter Cashmore. Uh, at the time it was found with a Gareth Ace 250 and it was 3 inches down. Hope you like it. Now this next video, although it is a finds video, is a little bit different. This is a call back to a video in part 2 from Detectorus who showed us a Roman artifact. Spartacus 1 has also found something very very similar but it's part of something which casts a new light on it. Um, so it's either something very similar that was copied from an earlier design or it's a semi-complete artifact which explains what it was. So check this out and make up your own mind. But it's pretty interesting. Well, Detectorus, this is what your mystery find is. It's not a button like we all thought it might be, but a secret furniture lock or casket lock dating from the 1690s to 1750s, judging by the style of the metalwork. Well, I hope this has been of interest to everybody. And I hope it helps identify those strange type button objects that detectorists in England tend to come across. 
and at least the next time you get one you'll know what it is or what it's been off so happy hunting to you all and thanks for producing this worldwide metal detecting finds video series from guru it's been of great use and it's always nice to see what other people's finding around the world thanks a lot all the best happy hunting My name is Brandon. This is my entry for World Wild Metal Detecting Finds, and my channel name is The Brandon 316 UK. I filmed this on Saturday. It is an old horse brass that horses had on their leather straps. It was four to five inches um, deep, found in um, a grassy field or pasture with a Garrett Ace 250. Just show you there. So, thanks for watching. Alors, un indice auquel d'habitude je ne creuse pas, sur lequel je ne creuse pas, c'était il y a 40. Et puis là, je sais pas, en fait, euh, j'ai quand même eu envie, donc j'ai creusé. Et donc, euh, c'est ça comme menace, ça. Oh non. Oh non. <rire> Attendez, là c'est un peu gros là. C'est pas une monnaie en or quand même. Oh là 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 là. Alors là, mes amis. Bon. I turned it over and I thought, well, two of them. And I thought, hang on a minute. There's one, two, three, four of them all stuck together. Oh, you know, pretty good. Uh, no doubt about that. It's got an L etched on it. And I polished the other side. And what did I get? I got an X and an M and uh, several other little circular things going Thanks for watching. I'm not sure how well you can pick that out, but at one point this would have been gilded with gold. There's just a little bit of gilding next to the head. And this is quite a nice example of a snake belt fastener. I found this, it was very shallow, near my home in a ploughed field, with the Garrett Ace 150, which is my first detector, and my son was with me when we found it and we were both pretty excited because we could still see little traces of gold on it and it's such a, a beautiful little artifact that we both got excited and that was a moment that we shared. This one's more slightly Georgian, mid 1700s to early 1800s. Hello everyone, My name's Wayne, my YouTube name is Disaster and uh, this is the, my best find so far which happens to be a Persian gold coin from the late 1700s. I found this with the Technetics Omega 8000. It's about six to seven inches down. And uh, this was found in February last year, 2012. Let's pop it over, show you the other side. As you can see, it's got fantastic detail on there. Not very big, but that's my find. Thanks for watching. Got a crack and signal here, reading 1246. I'm in the fields just behind my house. This is the first decent signal, so it says it's about 8 to 10 inches deep, so I'll give it a dig. God damn it! Damn it! Hard! Not to worry, it's not too far from the house, I'll put a stick in there and uh, I'll come back when the ground's defrosted. I'm not gonna dig all the way through that. 
Why have you forsaken me? Let's face it, when the weather's as hard as this, snow covering the ground, the earth's like stone, you kind of dig anything out, even if you do get a good signal. Best thing to do is probably just to sit in front of a nice warm fire in your house, watch other people finding stuff in countries where the ground isn't so hard and there isn't any snow. Well, hey guys, um, this is a US Army first aid kit label. This was found approximately six to eight inches down in very sandy soil in um, Queensland, Australia. Uh, I found this in about November of 2012. And my name is John24Gold1 for my YouTube channel. Hello, I'm Richard, also known as Pond Guru. This is the find that I'd like to show for this video. It's a German Iron Cross, first class, from 1914. It's lost the black enamel off here, but you can plainly see what it is. Although, I do have to confess, when I found it, I didn't know what it was. I always thought German crosses were a little bit smaller. So, I made a bit of a fool of myself when I was uh, videoing that one, initially. But, that's quite a nice find. It was found about eight to nine inches down with the E-Track on pasture. Well, I'm sure some people would think that would make a nice necklace. Some people are strange though. Now for the German soldiers in World Wars 1 and 2, it would have been a big deal to wear one of those. It's, it would be a very cherished item. And I know my segment here is going to run on a little bit beyond the 45 seconds to a minute that I ask other people to stick to, but I've actually got footage of a German guy who was involved in the Second World War and he's explaining exactly what it means to have lost one of them um, and he's pretty passionate about it so check this out thanks for watching well, you've got to have a laugh, haven't you? <laughs> Hi guys, my find of the month this month is a Henry VII half groat. It's quite clipped. Um, Canterbury Mint. It was found with the Technetics T2 on rolled and seeded field. And it was found about two to three inches down. So I hope you like my find. Thanks for watching. This is probably one of my best finds I've had for a little while. I get a lot of coins, but this is proper history. This is a seconds to burst fuse of a 199 anti aircraft shell. It's World War II. It's got a manufacturing date of December 1939. This would have been screwed on top of the shell and then fired up, depending on the seconds timer. Would have detonated at the right height, hopefully taking out the German bombers. Plymouth was heavily bombed in World War II. The last time this was touched was by one of our guys firing this up, hopefully to uh, take out the Germans. <laughs> <laughs> what are you? you? You can't be led, surely. Oh, you're white. You are white. You are threatening to be silver. Beautiful, solid silver. 1819 George the Third half crown. What a belter. <laughs> Till I see you next time. Bye. That's got to be extremely fine, hasn't it? Hi, I'm Gary. My channel on YouTube is name is Hiliac. This is my find for a Pongaroo's um, metal detecting find series. Um, it's a lead trading token or bartering token dating back to the 15th or 16th century. It was used um, for various
transactions or even gaming tokens, all sorts of different uh, different things. It was finally in Newport in Shropshire with an XP dais and it was at a depth of about six inches. It was a very good signal. The ground was um, worked down potato ground. Okay, cheers. Hey Ponguru, this is for the worldwide health checking signs number four. I found this. It's a uh, little medallion of Jesus on this side, and it says Lady of Fatino on the other side. It's a uh, silver made in Italy, it's about five, six inches down. I use the White's IDX Pro with a carrot pinpointer. This is at a local park. Hello everyone, name's Wayne. This is my next find. This was found on the same day and the same spot as I found the Persian gold coin. This was about six feet away and this is from the mid 1700s. It's got a date there of 1746 and this is believed to be a Spanish cob uh, with two, it's two real cob. And that's another good find I have. Also found with a Technetics Omega 8000. Also around six inches down. Okay, thanks for watching. Hi guys, Rob here from YouTube's Roman Rob957. The find I've got for you today to look at is my very first find. The find that got me hooked on the on the metal detecting scene. It was found with a detector, which only cost about fifty pounds, uh, a gold something. I can't even remember its name now. A good little detector though, um, and it's here. It's an RP Warden badge. And this badge was found around right about three inches deep, not very deep at all, but it was under a bush in the countryside. Um, we had it looked at, and it was uh, a munitions company during the war, Second World War, on the back of the Thames. Thanks very much. Hi everybody, uh, my name is Mark, I'm from the Netherlands and my YouTube channel is 1979MDG and uh, this is my entry for the World Best Finds. Um, this is um, a Mount Stirrup and um, it's from the 12th century and I found it on a medieval dump site. Fortunately, I can't go there anymore. Um, it's made out of brass. And uh, it's one of my best finds. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you later. Donc, euh, bah, vous voyez un trou d'environ 10 cm à peine. Et puis attendez, voilà, c'est là. Là, vous voyez là. Hop, on prend ça ensemble. Alors, qu'est-ce que c'est comme monnaie Oh, on dirait qu'il y a une jolie patine dessous. Euh, le soleil s'est caché depuis un moment. Hello, this is my entry for the Worldwide Metal Detecting Finds. My name is John. My YouTube name is Jet Ski John, 2006, all one word. Uh, this is the item I found in October of last year, which is a Roman swatch sticker mount. Unfortunately, I've only got the photograph of it on my computer, which you can see now, uh, as it's been sent to my local FLO and now it's been re being referred to London for further investigation to find out exactly what, it's, uh, what type of mount it is or where it come from so there you go, I hope you enjoy it uh, also it was found with the Garrett Ace 250 in Lincolnshire about 4 inches deep bye for now now that find there Roman, although it did have a swastika on it, swastikas were also found in the Egyptian pyramids. Um, it goes way back, but people just seem to associate it with the Nazis. 
and the Nazis adopted it from an ancient symbol which didn't have the same sort of fear attached to it. I do know one fella in, who actually hunts in Germany. He's got quite a successful set of videos on YouTube. I'm sure he would have loved to have found that Roman swastika or that because that's kind of what he's into. He, he would have loved that. Oh, it's amazing. Okay, guys, I'm gonna move on now, but oh, wow. Okay, on to the next. The, I've got to give the machine time to analyse what's under the water. Not the water, man. The soil. Hey, Tubes. I've got another uh, Native American drill right here. And this one's kind of interesting in that it kind of looks like a bird effigy almost. It looks like bird wings out over here. It's got a little, uh, little flaw, a little flake knocked out of right there down in the bottom corner that makes it seem a little asymmetrical but it would have been very symmetrical when uh, new but uh, there's the business end on it a little uh, drill that they uh, napped into it typically in the eastern part of the United States these were made from uh, broken or you know no longer needed uh, arrowheads or knives and um, but uh, some sometimes they're made from scratch but this one wasn't. This one had been a blade of some kind. You can see the hafting down here on it where it was hafted. It. Thanks, guys. I'm on my way out to a new site today. Got a few hours off, so hopefully it'll produce something. It's a site that, to my knowledge, has never been detected before. That doesn't mean to say I'll find anything, but the anticipation, the anticipation is there. And those of you who go to Tecton will know exactly what I'm talking about. It's that anticipation, the unknown, not knowing what you're going to find. You might find absolutely nothing. Or you might hit something great within half an hour. And it's that excitement that gets people my age and older who really should know better too excited to sleep sometimes. I know if I've gone out with somebody and they've found loads of good stuff on a particular site, and I'm going to go there the next morning, I have a hard job sleeping. But this video series has been great for me to put together because of the anticipation. The anticipation of what's going to come through. I've no idea what people have been finding throughout the world. And I've no idea what video is going to come through for each episode. One video which didn't come through, but bears reporting, is a huge gold nugget that was found in Australia a couple of weeks ago. I'm sure everybody that's watching will have already seen this on the news. But basically, it's a 5.5 kilogram nugget found in Australia, the Mine Lab GPX 5000, at roughly two foot deep. This is how it was reported in our country. This is from ITN News. They actually failed to mention what it was found with, apart from a metal detector, but now you've got the info, here's the clip. Going for gold and lots of it, as a prospector in Australia unearths a 12 pound giant nugget of the stuff in the town of Ballarat. The lucky finder, who used a state-of-the-art metal detector to discover the piece of gold, decided to remain anonymous, handing it instead to gold shop owner Cordell Kent. The biggest nugget he'd found was a quarter ounce piece, but then he found this one yesterday. So now his wife's very happy, he's very happy, and the detector's paid for. And he has every reason to be happy. That banknote is just there for scale. The gold is in fact worth more than 295,000 US dollars, with the gold shop on the hunt for the highest bidder. Now that's one mighty deep hole that you wouldn't have minded digging. Hey guys, it's JMO. Uh, this is my entry into 
on Guru's finds from around the world. This is my chicken hook that I found on a farm site in New Hampshire with the Garrett H250 stock elliptical coil. It was about four inches down, all hand forged iron. These were used in chicken coops and in meat houses and smoke houses. And they would have a bunch of these strung from beam to beam on a rope. And they would hang the chickens from it to bleed or, uh, you know, some chunks of meat to cure in the smokehouse. It's very sharp. I have no idea how old it is. Chicken hook. Hello guys, it's Ash and I from YouTube. My find of the month this month uh, is a little George III silver threepence dated from 1770. Uh, I found this in January this year and found it with a Technetics T2 on dead stubble and it was about three inches down. Thanks very much for watching. Hi everybody, this is E Tracking Ohio again. This is my Franklin Pierce campaign token from the 1852 elections. Franklin Pierce was the 14th president of the U.S. He served from 1853 to 1857. I found this with the E Track at a construction site where they tore out the roads and the sidewalks. It was about two inches deep underneath an old sidewalk. Um, from what I can tell, it looks like he came through and campaigned on the railroad in 1852. G'day guys. Um, this is my Florin trench art coin ring. It's made from silver. Um, it's, here's an example of the coin that it was actually made from. It was made by an American soldier during World War II. Um, and it it's actually signifies the red arrows, the unit that they are actually in, and the lines across it actually signify Hitler's, Hitler's lines that, that they crossed. And this was found approximately about three to four inches down in really sandy soil in Queensland, Australia. And my name is John 24 Gold One. Hi guys, um, I'm like really excited. Um, I should have made this video earlier, but la yes, today actually, but it passed midnight now. Um, yes, yesterday I went metal detecting and I went to an old home site that was built in 1866 to nine. I mean, it's, I think it was 1940 something, but. Yeah, um, I went metal detecting there, and there's ton it, now it's like a local hunting area where people can shoot targets and shoot now. Well, I'm like so excited. I went there, and I, there was trash everywhere. I was getting tons of hits. And then I got this real high hit, and I was like, it's like really good. And I start digging it, and I see some really big roundness in the hole. Like, it's like big. I'm like, what the hell? Like, literally, like, I was so excited, and I used my pinpointer, and I found it, and you're never going to believe what I found. Um, I'm, like, super excited. I found an 1883 Morgan Silver Dollar. It's, like, one of the best coins I've ever found. I finally found my first 18th century coin. It's, like, awesome. Damn. Um, it's pretty sweet. I just wanted to show you guys. Um, I'm just going to put it in a case and not going to touch it. Put it with my collection, but that's about it. I just wanted to show you what I found at an old home site. And goodbye. Check out my other metal detecting videos. Like and subscribe. This is so the watch I found with my Technodex Delta 4000. At about three, four inches deep. It's a Swiss watch, pocket watch, about 1920s. His name is Matt98626.
The detector used to find this coin was a Joan Allen coin shooter. It's only a cheap detector because it's only been detected a few months. And here's the coin. A silver hammered Edward the First. These are this. Slightly like condition. Not a very good camera. This was found with 14 Roman coins, and this these were all found within five hours. Right, thanks for watching. Hello there, Jed Dodd, metal detectist in the UK. This is the strangest thing I have ever found with a metal detector. A fully working weather vein <laughs> with a cockerel. <laughs> it was about four inches deep. I was using an XP dais, but I could have got this with a pointed stick. Look at that. <laughs> now, that has got to be a one off. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Hello, this is Mr. Mick 123M, and what you just seen me dig was this lovely coin. It's a silver hammered Henry the Seventh growth dating 1507 to 1509. It's in wonderful condition, as you can see. It was my first hammered and my only hammered coin I've found to date. It was found four inches down with a Garrett H250 with a standard coil, and it was found in Liverpool. Thanks for watching. Check out my other finds at Mr. Mick 123M. Hello, Pond Guru. My name is Andre and I live in the Netherlands. And I'd like to show you one of the best finds I made. Uh, it was about 17, 18 years ago when we were attending a rally in the south of England. Uh, we were there a couple of days before the rally and we searched a small field found several Roman coins and at the end of the day when we were walking back towards the car I found this uh, golden Celtic coin it's dated about 300 BC and as you can see it's in great shape this side shows a, a, a head and the other side shows a horse I will show you the other side. This is the side that shows the horse. So I hope you and your viewers like this find and I'd like to say goodbye from the Netherlands. Hi YouTubers, Roman Rob here, 1957. And the item I have here today is a little bronze medal. It's from the Van der Mercy organisation, a youth organisation, which was formed in 1875. Uh, the Van der Mercy organisation became the RSPCA in 1883. And these medals were handed out once you signed a declaration saying you'd be kind to animals. It was found with the AT Pro, run about seven or eight inches down, I believe, on pasture, in memory serves. Um, it was uh, an unexpected find. I thought it was a dog, collar at first, dog tag at first. There's one of these medals on display actually at the uh, National Army Museum where a guy called Private Paul in the First World War was awarded one for his, uh, his lords towards the horses and it's all, it, it links to the war horse story. So thanks very much. Bye. Keith e. Six here of Metal Detecting in Alaska. Uh, this is one of my best finds for this fall. Uh, I thought I found an 1854 $20 gold piece, but unfortunately it was a replica, backside's blank, but uh, it was a very exciting find. I found it uh, probably about uh, four to six inches down uh, in about uh, six inches deep of water at a local swimming area in North Pole, Alaska, using my Fisher Gold Bug. Hello, I'm Richard, channel name Pond Guru, and this is 
the find I'm putting in for this episode. It's a George the Second, Monday, two pence. A tiny little silver coin, probably no more than 15 millimeters across. Now this is in great condition and it's dated 1743. I found it in the field in front of my house. And believe it or not, it was about 9 or 10 inches down. Still gave a great signal. Um, I was really shocked to find something as small as this, so deep. And that was using the 18 inch coil, Roman sight pattern, on the Mine Lab E track. I thought it was a Roman coin at first. I thought it was my first Roman silver, but I'm just as pleased with that. Great little coin. Hello, I'm Ben. My YouTube name is Pull Tab King. I found this in September 2012. It's a Victorian general service button from about 1840. I found it with my Garrett Ace 250 in about 2 inches of water. Thank you. Je sais pas si c'est une monnaie euh, identique ou quoi, mais on va le voir tout de suite. On va le prendre ensemble. Allez, c'est parti. Voilà. Alors, là, il semblerait bien que ce soit... Oh oui, regardez. La même famille. C'est de la même famille. Qu'est-ce qui s'est passé là Excusez-moi, mais euh, j'ai des moustiques autour de moi. Ça m'affole un petit peu, j'en perds la monnaie. Alors attendez voir. Allez là, hop. Oui, regardez. Hi everybody, this is Mark from uh, the Netherlands. Um, my YouTube channel is 1979MGG and this is uh, my next entry for the world best finds. Um, these are they. They are uh, silver pieces uh, from late uh, 17th century and I found them on an, uh, a field uh, with the AT Pro. They all belong to uh, one site and so one treasure, 19 in total. And uh, yeah, also one of uh, my best finds uh, in my collection. Hello everybody, my name is Connor. My YouTube channel name is Connor0044. This is the find I'd like to show this time. It is a 1912 um, gold half sovereign of George V. Um, 22 karat gold, um, and I'm very, very, very pleased with it indeed. Best coin of the year. Now this came out in pasture with the uh, Technetic Seotech Pro, and um, it was about five, six inches down, and it was giving an iron reading uh, as well. Just go to show if in doubt, dig it out, and I was rewarded this beautiful coin. Um, yeah, by far my best coin there, and on this side it shows St. George slaying the dragon. Um, but yeah, beautiful, beautiful coin, once in a lifetime find, and uh, I'm only about a year detecting, so yeah, very pleased with that. Thanks for watching. This fairly innocuous piece of land behind me there, just rough scrub land, looks like nothing but it was once very important. It was described in the past as having one of the two greatest fairs in the whole of England on that land. As it was common land, it used to be visited quite a lot in the 70s and 80s by people with metal detectors. Here we've got an information board that tells us all about this site, the origins of it, Middle Ages, 18th century, 19th century, 20th century, present day. There is a footpath over it. 
but that's about it. Now there was some phenomenal finds came off this site, um, but unfortunately, about 20 odd years ago, there was a legal challenge to the status of the land, and all that stopped. There's no doubt still loads of good finds there, but see that sign there? It's one of the signs that went up. Private land, no metal detectors. I think that kind of sums it up. That tells you where the landowner's coming from. Just in case you missed that sign, there's another one on the gate as well. <laughs> so you're under no illusions that you're not welcome. Although we're stuck for metal detecting here, people would have come from all over to visit this site. And now we're reduced to looking for the places where they camped, where they stayed overnight, where they looked after the livestock. And in some of those places, we can still make great finds. Unfortunately, I personally haven't been lucky enough to go on this site. I got into metal detecting way too late. I suppose it could go on in a night, but given the landowner's hatred of metal detectors, it's probably not a good idea because you'll end up in court. Now then, I bet there's quite a lot of people watching this who are thinking, I just wish that fat fool would shut his stupid face. All I want to see is the finds. Here they are. Hi there, my name is Lee Treasure Hunter Martin from the Metal Detecting Worldwide Group on Facebook. And my YouTube channel name is Rockphonic1. This is my find to show. It's a 17th to 18th post medieval seal matrix still spins around and I found it with the gold max power it was about five to six inches down on pasture land thank you for watching bye Hello everyone, it's Ashanaya from YouTube. Uh, my find of the month this month is a hammered coin. It's uh, Spanish two rails, uh, dates from 1469 to 1504. It's quite heavily clipped and it's been holed as well. I think the uh, plough's taken a chunk out of it. But uh, it was the first hammered coin that I found and that was back in October in 2012. It's definitely one of my favourite coins and uh, one I'll be keeping in the collection for some time. Uh, it's found just outside Chester, using the Garrett Ace 250 at the time, um, on stubble, and it was about two to three inches down. So I hope you enjoy that, and we'll see you on the next one. Well, hey guys, Keithy Six here of Metal Detecting in Alaska, and uh, I wanted to share with you my 1939 Univex 8mm camera. Uh, I found this with my Fisher Gold Bug and it was buried in a coffee can under a pine tree near an old prospector's cabin here in Fairbanks and uh, I did have a roll of film just wish I could see what was on it alright thanks I'll show some pictures of what this looked like brand new Hi everybody, um, bought a metal detector last year, a Garrett 250 Ace. Uh, I've only had the um, opportunity to use it just about two weeks ago, went out for the first time. I was lucky enough to find um, Silver Hammered Richard II Half Groat. And that was found at Aldermaston in pasture land. Thanks for watching. Hello, all you metal detectors around the world. My name is John. My YouTube name is Jet Ski John 2006. This is my find a Roman silver denarius coin, which is Septimus Severus, dated 193 to 211 AD. Right, I believe this emperor died in February of natural causes just outside York which is not far from where I found this coin uh, I'd only been metal detecting a few months and got invited to a dig just outside York bear in mind I'd only found things like P 
pennies and stuff before. Then I got a signal in plough fields with my guy at H250. Looked on the top and this coin was looking at me. So there you go, on the other side. He's holding corn opia and corn ears. And by the way, I'd like to thank uh, Ponguru for putting all these videos together and your hard work doing it. Keep up, keep up the good work and hopefully look forward to seeing you next one. Bye for now. Hi everyone, um, my name is Ian, otherwise known as Detecting Devon. Um, this is an entry for Richard's or Ponguru's worldwide mail detecting finds. I've been trying to find something worthy of going on for a while now, but it's been um, boring junk and sixpences. So this is mine. It's a uh, 1914 um, Athletes Volunteer Force badge. Uh, they were issued um, to people during World War One, and they were sort of a home guard people. The, the people that, who were issued with these, uh, it's in fairly good condition, really. But um, it'd be nice to get a better one. They're quite rare. I've never seen one before, so um, that's why I thought it was worthy of going on anyway. So uh, it was found about six inches down with the Mine Lab E-Track, uh, all standard, and it was found on a normal field. Uh, to view my channel, it's Detecting Devon, and thanks, Richard. Bye. Because while I've been out there doing this, now and again, one of these little babies pop up. <laughs> ah, nice little half sovereigns. Yes, indeedy. Ooh. And there's nothing like a bit of gold, a bit of silver's alright, but when you pull one of these out, you know you've been there. <laughs> Brilliant! Fabulous little coins there, gold coins. Few bob there. Even scrap value, there's a few bob there in gold, I'll tell you. Thanks for watching. This is a medieval or Roman spindle whirl. Found this a while ago, but when I was out last night, I found that one. I haven't cleaned it yet and I'm hoping that this possibly will be my best spindle whirl yet. It looks like it's got some beautiful detail on it so I'll get it cleaned up and we'll find out. Oh yes, yes. Well that's it all cleaned up and it is indeed a beauty. That's definitely the best one I've found. It's made of lead and this was used to spin yarn. If you search YouTube, you'll find videos of people using spindle whirls. That's a, a really nice find. It was found approximately 12 to 13 inches deep. It was lying flat, and that was on pasture with the Mine Lab E track. Hello, everyone, this is Mick, Finders Keepers, formerly Mr. Mick, 123M. And what you're looking at is my oldest find to date. It was found in a hole whilst using a Garrett Ace 250 looking for a metal object and this turned up it's a piece of flint and it's been worked it's got a very sharp edge i took it to my local flo officer and as you can see from the report it dates 8300 bc to 800 bc it's had three flakes removed to form the sharp edge uh, and it's been napped or flaked to make it such such a way thanks for watching check out all my other finds at mick finders keepers my name is andre i live in the netherlands my youtube name is the dutch treasure and i like to show you this coin i found it's a silver coin it's dated 1573 and it's a German Thaler coin. Uh, on one side you see Count August. And just to give you a, uh, a sense how big this coin is, I put a, uh, a British one pound coin right next to it. There it is. So you can see it's a pretty big coin. 
I found this coin in the eastern part of the Netherlands a couple of years ago with a laser B1. The coin was pretty deep, I think 9-10 inches. And it's really a find of a lifetime. Now I will show you the other side that has much more, even more detail than this side. Here is a look on the other side. It's got some beautiful detail. I hope you can see it. So I hope you like this find and have a look at my YouTube channel. Until next time from the Netherlands. Bye! Hi everyone, my name is Mark, I'm from the Netherlands and my YouTube channel is uh, 1979 MDG and this is the next uh, entry for the world best finds and it's a combined uh, combined find um, these are all from the rally in the UK and uh, this is a Tudor button A Roman bronze coin, uh, uh, Roman bronze bead, and a silver hammered coin from the uh, from Ireland. Can't remember which uh, uh, which king, but uh, it's very old. Hi everybody, this is Dave from Relic County, Scotland, and this is an entry into Pond Guru's World Finds. This is a solid silver football or soccer medal that I found two weeks ago on Dumbarton Foreshore and it's from a team called Dumbarton Harp that were formed in 1894 and went bust in 1925. They didn't win too much so this makes this even rarer. Uh, it says at the top there won by the initials of the winner on the plaque and it's dated 1908. On the back is a harp to represent Ireland and it's fully hallmarked with a maker's mark. I absolutely love it. They played in green and white and were formed, formed by Irish immigrants that came to Scotland in the same way Celtic Football Club and Hibernian were formed, but they're still going to this day. This team isn't. Thank you for watching. Bye for now. And this is Pestleman 1951. What I have here is a black steatite charm stone. Some people call them egg stones. Now steatite is just a fancy word for soapstone, but uh, I found this one on the top of a mountain. And uh, there's, like I say, charm stones. It's, you know, there's, I got no date on this thing at all because it was found outside of an area that had multi uh, levels of sites around it. But a uh, pretty cool thing, little uh, carved, double-pointed football well American football I don't know what you euro guys call it <laughs> I often get asked where did you buy your detector it seems to find silver it's true it does find a lot of silver um, even on sites which have had very little activity this just seems to find silver really well this is the mine lab e-track and to answer that question So now you know, that's where I got my detector from, I couldn't be happier with the machine or the service, so check out Joan Allen, top notch company. Now I live in a part of North East England where historically there's not that much happened over the years or certainly not much been recorded. I tend to hunt upland pasture, places fairly near my home where there's no sort of records of any settlements or anything. And I still managed to find some half reasonable finds. Um, I do stumble on the odd site, the likes of the coin shooting field, which is featured in a lot of my videos, which I found hundreds of coins in. That was an unknown campsite to anybody that was living around there, um, because it was a campsite between the First and Second World War. And just by having a look at the things that I found there, I managed to work out it was used by scouts, army, navy, boys' brigade, 
And there was another one as well, it might have been RAF, I forget. It seemed to be kind of forces related, but there was a nation of coins there. I was the first one to detect it, because it's right out in the middle of nowhere. Nobody would have thought to detect it before, and it turned out to be a really good sight. Hopefully, some of the sites around here, around my home, will also be good as well. I've yet to find a really good one though. Although, that field in front of me, down there, is where the Roman road came through. That's a really flat field next to the river. And I've had a few half reasonable finds. Managed to find a hammered coin, which from a field that's never been turned over is a pretty good achievement. Also a few bits of silver coins and so on, but the stuff out there is very deep. Hence the E-track with the big coil. There's probably two main reasons why I can find stuff in real upland areas where there's not much history and not much civilization. First one is probably the detector. This is a very good detector. It gets down deep. It's got good discrimination and it really loves silver. It can pull it, it can pull coins up from way down, which other detectors might miss. And the second reason, and possibly the most important, is that I read signs. You read what the landscape is like now, picture what it might have been back in the day, 200, 300, 600, 1,000 years ago. Look for natural resources, shelter, water, good transport links, i.e. flat land between A and B. If you have a, if you have a settlement a mile away, and there's a nice flat riverbank leading all the way up to the area you're searching. Chances are people might have either camped there or lived there. And those of you who are eagle-eyed may have noticed that here is another track. I'm just about make it out in the grass there. Now if I was trapping, that would be a perfect place to set a snare for a rabbit. Same sort of thing when I'm metal detecting. Just look for places where there might have been footpaths, where it would have been great to build a house, a good lookout, good shelter, that sort of thing. And quite often you can find stuff that nobody even knew about. There you go. That's nice, that was reading a crisp 1245 on the E-Track. And that is 1918 sixpence in beautiful condition. It's not very silver, but uh, it's just got a little bit of tarnish on it. Bah, cracking condition that, and that's exactly what you want to see when you pull back the turf. Take your sticking paws off me, you damn dirty ape! Hello guys, this is my video for Ponguru's World Wide Metal Detecting. This is one of my best finds. It's um, It was found on Pasture, four to five inches deep. It's uh, one florin. George the fifth, very 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 good neck. The date is 1920, and to metal detect out. Hello, my username on YouTube is Hiliak. This is my find for Pongaroo's find series. It's a thought to be a horse pendant. And apparently it's Celtic. That's the opinion of quite a few people that I've I've shown it to. I'm not quite sure yet, but it's a very nice object. This is fine for the XP Deus on stubble. And it's about six inches deep. Hello there, I'm Richard, channel name Pond Guru, and this is the find that I'm gonna show you today. This is a lead button. That's the back of it, with the little loop flattened over. And that's the other side of it. It's got a beautiful pattern on it. I found this about six months ago in a local field. And it's the only lead button that I've found. I find plenty of lead dress weights, but that's definitely a button. Unless somebody can tell me otherwise. I have been wrong before. That was found with the E-Track on pasture at a depth of about 10 inches. It gave a, a reasonably good signal. There's a close-up of it there. It's reasonably intricate for something made of lead and something so small. So, I like that one. Thanks for watching. 
Hi, Digadel250 here again, and this is my entry for Pongiru's metal detecting finds, worldwide metal detecting finds. This is my second post. First of all, we've got, I believe, is a Roman disc brooch. Uh, found about 3 inches deep, with a 250. Some signs of gilding on it there. I think there should have been a stone in the middle somewhere set, but obviously it's not there. But Nice find. And about 10 feet away, I found this, which I think is also Roman, which is, I don't know, a duck, a pheasant, a chicken. You see the enamel in round the eye, off a field that's full of buttons. And these two turn up. A couple of nice finds. Roman, I do believe. Okay, that's it for now. My YouTube channel is Digadel250. Bye for now. Hi all detectorists. This is Dickoff1066. This is a bronze passed off axe head. It was found approximately 7 inches. The date is from 1300 to 1500 BC. It was found in pasture land near Durham. It was found with the Explorer XS in December 2012. Thanks for watching. Bye. Hello everyone, here I am again, Lewis Richards, um, my metal detecting channel is called Lewis Richards, this is how you spell it, L-E-W-I-S-R-I-C-H-A-R-D-S, please subscribe, um, this is an entry for Pongaroo, Pongaroo's worldwide metal detecting find, I found this last year around September time, um, it was found in Staffordshire, it's Elizabeth the first six months. 1592 mark ton. I found it with my XP Gold Max Power on a stubble field at about one foot deep. Thanks for watching. Cheers, bye. Hello, everyone. My name is John. My YouTube name is Jetski John 2006. Uh, I dug up this coin about two weeks ago and I thought it was a George III silver coin until I turned it over and it revealed this which is a bank token 5 pence Irish 1806 I found it with the Garrett A250 in Cheshire about 5 inches deep and it was on its edge. Really impressed with it. And thanks for watching. Hello there. If like me you live in Northern Europe, you probably haven't been doing much detecting lately because the weather has been absolutely atrocious for months and months. It's a smidgen warmer today. It probably is up to about two or three degrees centigrade. The ground isn't frozen. It isn't snowing or raining. So I may well get out this afternoon. One good thing about detecting is, if you can't get out for weeks or months on end, it doesn't really matter. The stuff that you're after has been there for hundreds of years, it's not going to go anywhere. So it's just a question of biding your time, waiting for a good day, and then getting out and finding it. Hi, Madison Maine here. This is my entry into Pond Guru's Worldwide Metal Detecting Finds. And the find I've chosen for you guys is my pocket watch fob depicting Jesus on the front. I found this fob in a late 19th century, early 20th century campground, religious campground that is. And it's made out of brass, I believe, or bronze. And on the back shows the Pa Bell Company emblem. And it says made in Israel right on it and then there's some Hebrew below that which I can't decipher 
The Pa Bell Company was founded by a famous Israeli uh, sculptor, Maurice Ashlon, who uh, started the Pa Bell Company in 1939, and it created bronze and brass items until 1956. They're highly collectible. And that's my entry. My name is my YouTube name is Matt nine eight six two six. Text you use to find this coin is a Joan Allen coin shooter. Found a Saxon ski. <clears throat> See what I'm not going to find so far. I haven't been taking to it that long. You know, I'm really pleased with that. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Alright, guys. My name is Ben. My YouTube name is Pultab King. This is an 1800s horsehair fly fishing reel. It would originally have had a ivory handle. Just there, as you can see, it snapped off. I found it in June 2012. I found it with my Gart Ace250. In about three inches of water in a river in South Wales. Cheers, guys. Hello, viewers. Hello, Pond Guru. This is the Dutch treasure from the Netherlands. This time, I'd like to show you two of my golden hammered coins I found a couple of years ago. The first one I found was dated 1684. And the second one I found about three years later was dated 1758. As you can see, this one is really beautiful. This is the other side of the coins. As you can see, this one is really beautiful. And to compare the size of these coins, I have a American quarter here, so you can compare them. Okay, hope you like them again. Um, see you in the next video. Bye. Now, when I was on my way home from work this afternoon, I noticed something going on in the field, which made me think that's connected wholeheartedly to metal detecting. Now, over there, you can see a big pile of muck. That's cow muck and straw. Now that's been cleared out of a big barn very recently with tractors and trailers carted down here, stored in a pile and that's going to be spread on the fields. And once the muck spreader turns up there's going to be a tractor drive into that pile of muck and load up the muck spreader. The muck spreader is then going to drive out into the field and chuck the muck all over the fields. And in that muck there's going to be the odd coin there's going to be the odd crushed tin can. There's going to be all sorts of human muck, waste, things that people have lost. And although I can pretty much guarantee 99.9% .9 of the modern stuff that gets chucked out by the muck spreader won't be worth keeping, you've got to bear in mind that this process of bringing the animals in from the fields into big barns or in the olden days underneath houses to provide warmth and in places like Europe, which is very good for metal detecting, a lot of history, that practice has been going on for centuries. So now the animals are brought into a big barn which is separate from the farm. Years and years ago, people would live not so much a hunter-gatherer existence, but it would be subsistence farming. They would bring their own personal cattle in, their own sheep, under the houses or very close to the houses, 
They would use the heat from those animals to warm themselves, they would live above them. All the muck from those animals would then be taken out, put into a big midden, that would be spread on the fields. Take this thing behind me as an example. Above here is my log cabin. That's where I have an office. I go in there, I've got a wood burning stove. I do my internet based work in there. Underneath here, if I was living centuries ago, obviously I wouldn't have the internet. I would be using that as my house. And in the winter, the animals would be using under there for shelter. I'd be tending to those animals, I'd be dropping things out my pockets amongst those animals, taking their muck out, and in the spring, spreading it all around the local fields. And that's why there's so much stuff to find in the fields of Europe. There is, of course, things people have just dropped when they've been out. If you get a flat piece of land next to a river, it'll have been used for picnics and get-togethers for centuries. Same with bank sides that have been used for sledging, hilltops, for lookouts, clearings in woods, they'll have all been used for centuries, but in fields, where the muck spread on the fields, that's why there's such a good range of stuff to find. Now without further ado, let's see some of that stuff. Metal Detecting Palmer here. This is my entry for Worldwide Metal Detecting Finds by Ponguru. The thing that you can see on my hand is an 18 karat gold necklace which is older than 50 years because the pendant is an old style Mallorcan cross. This was found at about 3.5 inches in the woods of Mallorca with the Garrett Ace 250. It's worth about 75 euros in gold weight and it's my first gold. Well since then I didn't find any gold either but it's still my first gold. So if you want to check out my channel feel free to do so and yeah Hope you enjoyed. Hello everybody, my name is John. My YouTube name is Jetski John 2006 I found this item about two weeks ago in Cheshire, which was my second signal of the day. And when I cleaned it when I got home, I couldn't believe what it was. It's an intaglio seal, possibly about 18th century. Uh, so later on, I made a copy of the seal with some blue tack, and this is what it came out like. I found it about 3 or 4 inches with the Garrett Ace 250. Thanks for watching. And please check out my group on Facebook called History Hunters. Hey Pond Guru, this is Biggest Diggus out of Connecticut. Uh, coming to you for Worldwide Metal Detecting Finds number 9. Um, found this British halfpenny. 1773 I believe George the third about 200 yards away from my house found with a Garrett AT gold hello this is a video for Pongoro's uh, worldwide metal detecting finds I found this on pasture with a Maplin's advanced apparently um, cheapo metal detector it was about four inches deep uh, and it appears to be a key of some kind, although here and here there is no evidence of anything ever being attached to it, so I'm wondering if it is actually some kind of wrench. It appears, sorry, that there, that it's brass and it's been painted. Um, my YouTube channel name is Mr. Phil the Mole. There isn't any more uh, metal detecting videos on there, as this is my first find. Thanks for watching. Hi everybody, this is Mark from the Netherlands. My YouTube channel is 1979MDG. And this is my next entry. It's a Roman coin. Um, the Emperor is Domitian, and it's uh, about 78 uh, AD. It's a bronze coin. Uh, found it on a field, a plough field, um, and uh, what made it so special is that in the, in uh, my region there aren't aren't uh, any Romans. 
they went to uh, uh, to Utrecht, the Rhine, uh, but not not above. Uh, so um, that makes it very special. Here's another vine. I think it's a Roman lead skeleton figurine, something like that. But I would like someone to identify it for me. I think it might be older than Roman, but I doubt it. It's lead. Proven made. This was four inches deep on a foul field with the drain and corn shooter. And all it is is them. Thanks for watching. Hello, I'm Richard, also known as Pond Guru. This is my channel, this is my video, and this is my find. I actually made this years and years ago, maybe 15, 20 years ago. I was down the river. I was out with a very old C-scope metal detector. Didn't find anything of use at all. But this was perched on the top of a mole hill. The mole had obviously dug it out of the ground, but this looked like someone had just placed it on top of the mole hill. And this is a 1923 50 million mark coin with a very Jewish looking fella on the back there. And this coin is such a high denomination because it's in a time after the First World War the economy wasn't doing too good in Germany and there was hyperinflation. So this was worth pretty much nothing even though it's 50 million marks. If you fast forward that to 1980 50 million marks you could probably retire on that. Unfortunately now you can't retire on this it's worth maybe 10, 15 quid, but it's a very nice find. Hello everybody, it's uh, Ash and Aya from YouTube. Uh, my find of the month this month is a James the First Sixpence, dated 1605. Uh, I found this last week. Uh, it was on pasture. Uh, found with the Technetics T2. Approximately two inches down. It's in absolutely lovely condition and uh, certainly my find of the month. Hey guys, this is Mini Dude here and this is um, um, a video for the Pond Guru's uh, worldwide metal detecting finds. Um, hopefully number nine. This is a button I found. I'm not sure exactly how old it is or where it's from. That's why I'm posting it. So maybe some, one of you will know where or when it's from it has the queen's crown on it and about all i know it was that and that it's probably late victorian plus it's either white brass or bronze but yep this is for pawn gurus Metal, worldwide metal detecting finds. Mini Dude 4321 is my channel. But Hello there, this is Mick. My YouTube username is Mick Finders Keepers. And what you're looking at is a nine karat gold ring found with a Garrett Ace 250 using a DD coil and it's about four and a half inches down in a field in Liverpool. It weighs six point seven grams. As you can see, it's a lovely buckle design. The date letter inside, I've had confirmed by a jeweler, is 1817. So this ring is almost 200 years old. If you want to see me dig it live, check out my channel, Mick Finders Keepers. Hello, here are two of my best Roman finds. Uh, I made it uh, last year on a, on a fresh uh, plucked field here in uh, Germany, Rhineland area. Uh, first one is a satire, Roman, uh, Roman dated uh, 
in the second se century and I uh, think it's from a uh, Roman uh, furniture uh, application as you can see very very nice bronze satyr a god and uh, the second great find is a, a somorphic uh, fibula uh, it looks like a hippocampus hippocampi very very nice thank you very much Hey Tubers, this is Pestle Man 1951 and I've got a pretty unusual little find right here. This here is just exactly what it looks like. A male phallus, a, a phallic symbol, a uh, male charm stone. Uh, probably, uh, you know, something used in some kind of the, the Native Americans were uh, very... Um, uh, <clears throat> oriented, you know, religious. They had sympathetic magic, something like voodoo, like, you know, eat the heart of a lion to gain strength and courage and ferocity in battle. Well, <laughs> you can just imagine what this little charm stone was seeking to impart upon its possessor. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Mark, I'm from the Netherlands and my YouTube channel is 1979MDG and this is my next entry for the World Best Finds. It's a silver coin, a dime. Uh, what made it so special is that it's from 1819 and there were only struck 25,000 of these coins. Um, other coins were struck in the millions, but this one only struck 25,000. So it's uh, uh, worth a lot of money. And uh, I found it on a plowed field with the A3 Pro, and it's part of my collection. This is my video for Pond Guru's worldwide metal detecting finds. Um, this is a war merit badge obviously from the Nazi time uh, and I found this in the uh, in a wooded park um, in uh, Bavaria and yeah so there you go it's completely intact silver plated zinc alloy good this is um, Belgai 81. Uh, this is the first and only Roman coin I have ever found. Um, it was not very deep in the ground. I think it says Imp Caesar Trajanus, but I'm not really sure. Um, on the other side, it has AX and uh, I think a TR um, and it has SC on the bottom for Senatus Consultos and I think it might be the goddess uh, of peace Pax so thank you for watching any comments on Belgai 81 bye bye Hey Pond Guru, Biggest Diggus here. I uh, wanted to show you guys a button I found about six inches down with my Garrett AT Gold. The button is uh, circa 1860 to 1870. It's an Irish Republican Army uniform button that was used during the Finian raids on Canada. Uh, a rare find actually, uh, especially for Connecticut. But I would like to thank everyone on the TreasureNet forum for helping me with the identification of it. And thanks Pond Guru for the videos. Till next time, enjoy and happy hunting guys. Hi Pond Guru. This is my video for the Nation of Finds. This is a token of some sort. I, I think it is. This looks like a kangaroo and I'm not sure but this side it's an elephant for sure and you know I found this at the mountain mountains in Norway because I live in Norway
kind of hard to see there you can see it better much better and here it is the kangaroo it's made of copper for sure because you can see the patina or it's made of bronze I'm not sure but it's at least copper so this has soaked in oil and yeah it looks quite nice Hi everybody, I'm Dave from Relic Hunting Scotland and this is my entry into Pong Guru's World Finds Part 10. It's a copper pendant Victorian and found in a field on the banks of the River Leven uh, last week. The goddess is Hathor and she was the protective goddess and also the goddess of love and joy. She's wearing a headdress of horns and a sun disc and hieroglyphics round about her. There's an urn there and two fish there and other symbols. On the back there's a sphinx with pyramids either side and hieroglyphics again. I believe this to be a very rare find especially in Scotland or anywhere really uh, but the uh, Victorians were obsessed with ancient Egypt so I guess they had trinkets and things. Thank you for watching. Bye for now. Hello guys, it's the Aussie Coin Shooter here. Today I'm just putting in an entry for Pond Guru's worldwide metal detecting finds. So here are just two of my best finds so far. Just this 1919 Australian penny. Um, it's pretty nice, good condition. Found it about two, three months ago in an old park. Also my other favourite find is this one. It's just uh, an old chicken whistle, a rooster whistle, and they're pretty rare. And I found it in the hole, but it was cracked in half. So that's the only bad thing. But yeah, it's in pretty good condition. Alright, guys, so subscribe to the Aussie Coin Shooter and Pond Guru. Alright, see you guys, have a nice day. Hello, everyone. Um, I found this 50 pesetas Franco coin, Spanish coin. And I know there's nothing strange about that, but I found this coin 10 feet underwater in 5 inches of sand off the island of St. Kitts in the Caribbean with my Garrett Infinium LS. Thank you very much for watching. Hi all. Well, this is my find for Pongo's Worldwide Finds. Um, I found this find approximately about 8-9 inches down in a World War II trash pit on an American Army base that I hunt. Uh, I found it with a CTX and this is actually a silver marksman and medallion, an expert one. And this is a sharpshooter badge. They're just general awards given for the riflemen in World War II in the American Army. Um, my name is John24Gold1, and you can view my channel via YouTube. Thanks for watching. This is Matt98626, and here's another find I found yesterday. It's the uh, Henry II half penny, or something, half <laughs> It's found two inches deep on the child's build with a Joan Allen coin shooter. I've only found the same second hand coin. Not uh, not really in condition. You can see the hand there and then half the head. They feel bent in half. So let's bend it back a bit. Got a few, got a couple of cracks. Can't really see them. It's not brilliant, but it's good form. Good find. Hello guys, Metal Detecting Palmer here. <coughs> It's been a while since I did the last Pongo Worldwide Metal Detecting Finds video, so I thought I'd do one again. Um, 
in the meantime, I found loads of amazing finds. That's what I just show you on. Okay, so what we have here is a hammered coin, Venetian Soldino. Oop, let's have a look. Oh, can you see it? Can you not? Yeah, there you go. Mm. Very delicate. Okay, so <clears throat> it's dated late 14th century, like 1390 or something. Found it with the Garrett A's 250 mm, and the SEF 15 times 12 coil in the woods. It was right next to a piece of aluminum foil, aluminium, tin foil, as I would say normally. And yeah, really great find, I think. Mm, I'm not sure if it's silver, if it is. Yeah, I wasn't brave enough to clean it. Uh, I was frightened damaging it, so I think it's in great condition, so I'll just leave it like that. Okay, please check out my channel. Bye. Hello, this is my contribution to Pond Guru's Worldwide Metal Detecting Finds. This is a brooch I found on pasture at about 5 inches deep with the Garrett Ace 250. The design on the arms is of what appears to be a zoomorphic, uh, looks like a crocodile. There are traces of gilding on it and there have been Roman um, artifacts and coins taken out the uh, the area that I found it in. There is some trace of gilding on it. Um, my YouTube name is Mr. Phil the Mole. Uh, there's a couple of other bits on my uh, YouTube, but I'm only just sort of, uh, getting off the ground. Thanks very much. Hi everyone, I am Meriton62 from France, and this is my entry for Pongu Worldwide Metal Detecting Science. I want to show you today a Roman silver coin which I found with the Garrett A250. It was about 4 inches deep. It is a denier from Nerva. Nerva has been emperor from 96 to 98 after the feast. The other face indicates Concordia Exercitum, which means the harmony of the armies and represents a handshake. It is a kind of call for legends to make peace after the murder of the mission. Thanks for watching. Hey Tubers, this is Pestleman1951 and I just discovered Pond Guru's excellent um, worldwide metal detecting and now other finds challenge. And so I'm throwing one up here and this is for a Clovis point. Now this is the oldest known was the oldest known point in the Americas for the last 70 years or so, but just lately, in the last few years, a few guys have uh, started seriously proposing uh, older sites and an older culture before these. And it, this has been a real mystery for many years. And this year, these are the most um, valued and collected points uh, worldwide. They're found, uh, you know, there's big collectors for them in Germany, Japan, just all over as well as the Americas. And uh, th this point here uh, dates uh, to about 11,500 years ago, and uh, it's made from uh, highly agatized petrified wood. It's uh, very, very translucent. And uh, I, I have a feeling if it didn't have this uh, really strong ground staining here on the back, that it would almost be transparent. <laughs> well, anyway, I found this one here in uh, Arizona. I'm a, uh, I've been hunting and collecting Na Native American artifacts for uh, uh, 40 years. If you like to, if you like this kind of stuff, go to my YouTube channel. Thanks, guys. Hello, everybody. My name is John. My YouTube name is Jet Ski John 2006. This is my latest find, which is a Victoria Gothic Florin which is one tenth of a pound dated 1857 found last week in Cheshire with a Garrett A250 which was only about three to four inches deep 
which obviously you couldn't miss a signal this big. So I just thought I'd share it with you guys and thanks for watching and take care. Happy hunting. Bye for now. Hello everybody, my name is Connor. My YouTube channel is Connor0044. Um, and this is the find I'd like to enter into Pong this episode of Pongo's Worldwide Metal Detecting Finds. Not a metal detecting find, but it's closely related, and as you can see, it's a Neolithic flint scraper or chopper dating to 4000 to 2500 BC uh, because that's when um, Neolithic activity started in Ireland, where I'm from. Now, this is found on the beach um, in summer 2012, actually by my brother, and uh, it's a very, very, very nice find and a nice uh, relic. Nice artifact. It's a flint scraper or chopper. And I hope you like it. Go check out my channel. Connor0044. I have lots of metal detecting videos and I've, I've um, found some stolen things. So be sure to check out my channel. Connor0044. Neolithic flint scraper or chopper. Thanks for watching. Hello YouTubers, Ed here from uh, Facebook site facebook.com forward slash detecting UK. This is my find for Ponguru's uh, worldwide metal detecting finds. It's an uh, 1847 uh, wedding band ring as far as I can make out. Um, it's all marked 1847. It's 18 karat gold and uh, yeah lovely find. My first bit of gold. Um, only had my XP gold max for about two weeks and found this amongst lots of ring pools so took some finding yeah um, stick around for a lot more where this to come cheers bye bye hello I'm Richard and this is my find for this particular episode of worldwide metal detecting finds it's a cuboid shaped dice or die uh, game and piece shall we say I'm not quite sure it's dice or die it's number three one six three again two five every side's got a different number on obviously as a dice would or as a die would except with this one opposing sides don't add up to seven which i think all other dice do so a two you should get five on the other side of that except you've got a one four you should have three on the other end of that but you've got six and given its shape it's very likely to land on either six or four so I can only imagine that in the time when this was used and I presume it dates to Georgian times because I found Georgian coins around it um, there'd be quite a lot of fights erupt if this was actually used as a game and piece because it's most likely to land on four or six to most people that might just seem like a pointless piece of metal but this is the one find out of all the things that I've ever found that my wife has actually been interested in so that makes it extra special no real value to it but this is the one thing when she actually said do you know that's really interesting action hi my name is Jim my YouTube channel is the Geekzoid I hunt with a MyLab XS Explorer metal detector I hunt in Plover, Wisconsin, hence the big cheese head. That's what we are in Wisconsin. And I'd like to show you my great find. It's these 35 20 cent piece from 1937 Indochina French coins. They're not the best shape, but they were all in one roll, about three inches underground, in a paper roll. And I opened them up and I thought they were a battery. Excellent find except they all got these little tiny holes in there. I don't know the story on those But uh, that's my great find. I want to thank um, Pond Guru for showing me about this channel here Really enjoy it and uh, Once again, my youtube channels the Geekzoid. I have this video on there if you want to watch it and subscribe I enjoy it and love metal detect. Thank you very much. Hi guys, it's Lewis here, detecting the Midlands from YouTube. This is my entry for Ponguru's Worldwide Metal Detecting Finds. This is an absolutely beautiful Iron Age Gold Stator from 
the Karitani tribe. It's a VEP stator. I found this about five, six inches down with the XP Goldmax Power in Leicestershire. And it's my best find today, really. Absolutely amazing. Thanks for watching. So, that's the end of an epic finds video. If you've watched it all the way through without fast forwarding, I've just got one thing to say, and that is have you got nothing else better to do with your time? Get out detecting. If you've just skipped through it, that's fair enough. It's a long video. Not many people can take two hours out of their day to watch a video. But I do thank you for tuning in. Since I put the Find Series videos together, parts 1 to 10, um, I've actually got another detector, it's an XP Deus, so I'm already making some really good finds with that, and I'm finding that to be a lovely detector. So if you check my channel out, you'll find out that I'm starting to upload videos about the XP Deus, and because I've also got an E-Track, um, when I get the big coil, i.e. the 11-inch coil for the Deus, I will be doing comparison videos. I'm already going out with friends and also my son and we're just swapping which detectors we're using one's using a Deus, one's using an E-Track and then we're swapping, we're comparing finds and so on so those videos will come as well there's nothing more I can say really other than thank you very much for watching this check out the people who took the time to make videos for this great series and I'll see you in the next video if you go onto somebody's channel next to the name quite near the top of the screen where it says subscribe there's this little wheel shape thing if you click on that that's the settings for your subscription to that particular channel from there you'll be given the option to receive an email every time that channel uploads a new video so if you haven't already subscribed to me Click that little wheel thing, select to be informed every time I upload a new video. And please do the same for everybody else who's involved in this series.